Has your post gone soft, not staying as rigid as it once was? Well, if it's a RockShox Reverb Dropper Post, this video will help without completely dismantling the seat post. If it's not a Reverb Dropper, seek help elsewhere. A Reverb Dropper Post has two separate hydraulic systems. One is for the push button, and the push button on your handlebar pushes fluid down through here and then pushes the poppet valve down. But that fluid only goes to here. It does not affect what's inside of the seat post. The seat post itself has a much bigger hydraulic system which holds the seat post up or down. So it has a, in the outer area there's oil and then in the inner area there's oil and the inner area is what actually holds the seat post up the way the seat post generally works is this has a seal, this internal floating piston on the outer has a seal, this is on the inside. And when you push the button without any pressure on here, that air pushes up on the internal floating piston, allows the oil to flow into the center, into the inside chamber, and that pushes the seat post up. When you put pressure on the seat post, then you overcome this air pressure out here that's pushing on the internal floating piston, and you allow the fluid to flow this direction out to the outer chamber, and then you close the valve and it stays down. So the reason you get a saggy seat post is if you get air inside of here, air is compressible. And so when you go to push on it, that air is able to compress and it just can come down a little bit. You may find that if you push your button, compress your seat just a little bit, that that firmness comes back because the air moves back out into this outer chamber. So what you want to do is bring it all the way up to full height so that all that air gets pulled back down into this chamber and that's going to allow us to fix it because we're going to take the top off, take the poppet valve off, refill the missing fluid, displace that air that was in there and then put the poppet valve back in and that should firm up the seat post again. I already did a rebuild of this shock in the not too distant past and so I'm fairly sure that this isn't a problem of just bad seals internally. It's just some air has gotten beyond either the floating internal floating piston or this seal right here around the, the inner shaft and, and the inner chamber. So air is getting up into here and I'm going to show you what that means. Obviously push this down. I can show you See, we've got that much play. Now what happens is, if I open up the valve <clears throat> and push it down and hold it down, you'll see that the air moves into the outer chamber and no longer do you have the squishy post. See, now no squish whatsoever. So that air has moved into the outer chamber, and then when you let it come back up, it gets sucked back into the inner chamber. And that's actually where you want it in order to do this, uh, this repair, is to have it in that center. You want the squish in order to do the repair. And the reason you want the squish is because getting it out of the inner chamber is going to be easier than trying to get it out of the outer chamber. Um, the outer chamber is not exposed when you open up the poppet valve. It uh, directly lines up with the inner chamber only. In order to achieve this without taking the shock completely apart, what I'm going to do is first remove all the air from the from the pressure chamber and I'm actually going to take out the valve core. I'm going to put a clamp onto this to keep it from coming down at all. Then we're going to take out the cover, pull out the poppet valve, fill it back up with reverb fluid, um, 
and then put it all back together and that should displace all or most of the air that's in there. So I'm going to start by, by the way, my clamp is only holding this thing in place. It's not got any pressure on it. Take out the air valve here. Ah, important note, one thing I'm going to do here, I am going to put a clamp on the post, the dropper part of the post, so that this will not drop down at all during this procedure. See now, there's nothing I can do to push that down. So, I'm going to let out the air. A little bit of oil came out, but that's okay. It's and that may be a result of the uh, the blow-by that allowed air to get in the chamber in the first place. Remove the puppet valve cover. Okay. Wasn't really expecting that, but okay. Now the actuator or poppet valve just comes right out like this. See what that looks like. And what you have to do is rem uh, fill up the fluid to about where that line is and then when you go and push this thing down in it displaces all the air as you as you push it back down in it displaces the air and you end up with a full chamber of fluid i bought this giant container of reverb fluid because it really wasn't much more than buying a tiny one and the tiny one was barely enough to rebuild the shock so i figured I'd have it available for doing bleeds in the future and also for, um, I think SRAM hydraulic brakes use the same stuff and front forks, which I also have a, a SRAM front fork too. So getting the big container was just economically better, but you don't have to get the big container. And this, this length here is a little too long, but I'm going to try to get it to be about right there, which is, I think, the length of the special tool for bleeding these things. And there's another special tool if you have the stealth version, which has the actuator in the bottom of the post. I have filled up the fluid in here. Now I'm actually going to suck a little bit back out of it. So there's a little shelf that the that stops the poppet valve from going down further in. I have filled it up to just about there. So it took just a little bit of pressure to push the poppet valve all the way down into there and then be able to fit the cover on that's the uh, the uh, hydraulic actuator section.
Okay, I felt the snap ring pop in there. Should spin around pretty easily, and it does. Okay, now I'm going to bleed out the, um, <clears throat> the actuator section and try it. Uh, I didn't have this turned all the way back out to the slowest setting, which is where you want to do it to bleed it. So now I'm going to bleed it properly by hooking up a syringe to here and here and pushing the fluid through while this is in the slowest setting or the most open setting. And that should get me <clears throat> a really good bleed on the, uh, on the lever or actuator. air bubbles out of the syringe. You can see the air bubbles coming out here. Okay, now we go the other way again. Pull. Pushing. Pulling, see no air bubbles are coming out of this end. Now I don't see any air bubbles coming out of that end as I push more through. You can see the syringe moving here. I can pull, you can see the fluid trying to go back in. I think we're good. Now I'm going to lift this one up. You want your higher one done first, and then I'll do the lower, and then I'll do the other one after I have. Lift this up, undo the syringe, put the cap back in there, tighten it up. Okay, that side should be done. Now this side. Again, we're pointing up so that any air that's in there isn't going to get sucked down in. No fluid's going to run out. Got to put a little air in the chamber in order to uh, make sure it's going to come back up after it is pushed down. Ah uh, yes, much better. You can see there's just a tiny little bit of play, but much better than before. I think we're looking at about a millimeter of play here. We're not talking anything that you're going to notice is like, oh, I have a shock suspension. It's not like that at all. It's definitely firm. So, much better. We'll see how long this lasts. So I wanted to explain that the um, 
principle is exactly the same for the stealth version. It's just everything is inverted. So the air goes into the top, the actuator is at the bottom, and the poppet valve is really long. And so you set your oil depth from this end with a special tool or a tube cut to a certain length that you can suck the fluid out after you've you know filled it in, overfilled it slightly, and then you suck it out to a certain level. And there's um, the reverb um, manual will tell you what those levels are for your shock. There is a special tool that sets the depth for what I just did. Um, I don't have the special tool, but I don't think you really have to have it because this depth is only about, you know, that, that uh, tool only is about, extends about maybe three eighths of an inch or something down in there. You know, maybe uh, six, eight millimeters, something like that. It's not very far in there. So you can sort of eyeball it and then try it. <clears throat> Um, this one is going to be much, much harder to do if you don't set the, the depth properly. But essentially, you do everything the same, but you flip the shock upside down to do it. You let the air out again at where the seat post is at the bottom now. Then you're going to deal with your hydraulics from the top. You're not going to take anything apart. You're going to clamp the, clamp the post. You're going to pull out the, uh, the um, actuator and the poppet valve, and you're going to add a little bit of oil verify your depth with an oil depth tool or just add, you know, a few drops at a time until you get it right and then seal it all back up, bleed out your actuator and uh, it should work. It's essentially the same principle. So just upside down. So mine is functioning perfectly fine. I suspect the air will get by this or the internal floating piston again at some point, but this is a much easier fix for that than to tear down the entire um, seat post and try and replace all those seals and stuff again. I have already rebuilt mine, so I did not feel the need to do that. I just knew I had a little bit of air that was getting in here, and if I displaced that air and with fluid again, it should work fine and so far, so good. It appears to be working well. I would also suggest don't lift up on the seat. Uh, what I've see is it allow it, it moves up, but it won't move down. But I suspect that that lifting up on the seat allows a negative pressure inside of the oil, and that'll suck air around the um, this high pressure air will be able to bypass as you negatively pressure the uh, the oil. It's just a guess, but I would say avoid lifting the bike by the seat or lifting up the seat when you haven't pushed the actuator. Hope this video has helped you out, and uh, you can uh, refurbish your old reverb shock without tearing it completely apart.